Lieutenant Sun, uh, no, 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 hey, you're right, <coughs> excuse me, this is 17 three-day two, I think we have give or take about 10 lessons left in the year, yep, no applause necessary, um, I want to, first of all, today remind you that Demoif is is coming on the test. He's coming. We're going to have him on the test. You're going to need to know how to use it. Okay. Uh, we're going to find lots and lots of roots today, and then we're going to do an assignment. So let's uh, let's jump to this slide right here. I'm going to I'm going to work with you on a couple of pieces here, and I'm going to have you work together on the rest of it. Um, let's put both of these in cis form. Okay. So this would be Z1, right? Would be I see a 45, 45, 90 in which quadrant? Yep, so that'd be three root, oh, not root three, because we're right, right? This is positive, so we're going to the right. This is negative, so we're going down, right? So the hypotenuse of that triangle would be three root two in a 45, 45, 90. Cis, I'm going to go negative pi over four. And then we're going to take that to the third power. Oh, goodness, so what will that do? So that'll turn this into cis what? Negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, good. Uh, now, what will it do to the 3? Turns into a 27. And that turns into a 2 root 2. Right? Because root 2 squared is 2. And that leaves... So here, let, let's, let's make this clear over here. So root 2 cubed is equal to root 2 squared times root 2. All right, root 2 squared is 2, so I get 2 root 2. So this I would simply write as 54 root 2 cis negative 3 pi over 4. All right, I'm going to erase to leave a little bit of space for this next one here. Yeah. Everybody comfortable with where we're at here? Okay, now what is this uh negative three gonna do to this thing? Yeah, it's gonna well no 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 no. This negative three out here. Right? It's gonna turn it into this. Right? That's what it's going to turn it into. Would you take a couple minutes and see if you can find cis form for the denominator, please? Okay, I'm seeing this. Uh, oh, that's nice. It's going to be 54 root 2 again. Cis what? 9 pi over 4. 9 pi over 4 is just going to be pi over 4. Hey, let's uh, let's see what we can do here. Now, this is counterintuitive a little bit because the second uh, complex number had a negative exponent. So therefore, when we multiply, we're actually dividing. So what would happen to our 54 root twos? Yeah, they go bye bye. All right. So we get cis, and then what do we do at the two angles? Subtract. It looks like a negative pi to me. Yeah. Or you could write pi. That's fine as well. Yeah. No. Okay, now this, this I, uh, I don't think I can do quite as easily with the multiplication, but I'm going to take 54, I'm going to square it, and I'm going to multiply it by 2. I don't know what 54 squared is. I need some help. So 2,916 is 54 squared. I'm going to multiply that by 2, and I get 5,800 and what? 32? Okay, so I get 5,832 because I multiply the coefficients. What do I do with the angles? I add them. What would I get? Negative pi over 2. Yeah. I'm 
I'm going to find the four roots of 16. What does that even mean? Well, that means this. Okay, now I'm going to do this in a way that you might be more familiar with first, and then I'm going to show you the way to use complex numbers to do the same thing because it won't always be as easy as I'm about to show you right now. So I think we can all agree, oops, no. We can all agree that that's true, yeah. And that is a difference of perfect squares. So the difference of perfect squares allows me to do this. If I foiled that, I would get the equation above, yeah. So I factored it, and guess what? I still have a difference of perfect squares. Right? This piece right here becomes z plus 2, z minus 2. This piece right here becomes what? Why are there eyes? Because... Right, if I solve that for zero, that'd be z squared equals negative two. Take the square root of negative two, what do you get? No, oh, sorry, negative four, you get plus or minus two i, right? Okay, so what are our four roots? I get plus or minus two and plus or minus two i. So if I were to take any one of those and take them to the fourth power, what would I get? 16. 16. Where do they exist? All right, if I were to plot these on the complex plane, here's the real portion, here's the imaginary portion. What did they form? Well, here's 2, here's 2i, here's negative 2, here's negative 2i. What it forms, what it forms is square. It does, you're tempted to say, oh, it forms a circle, but check this out. If I would have gone for the eight roots of 16, I would have gotten each of these, but then I would have gotten each of these. So I would have a perfect regular octagon. And the more roots I go to, what shape am I forming? A circle. I'm starting to form a circle. Okay, so let me show you how to use complex numbers to do what we just did. Uh, no, because you can't find the infinite number of roots of a complex number. So, okay, we're going to do this now using the complex form. So we turn this number, or this, uh, this form of a complex number, into a complex number like this. And how would I write that 16 plus 0i in cis form? Sixteen cis zero pi or two pi or four pi or six pi or eight pi. So what should I do? I'm gonna add a two pi k onto it. Now here's what happens. I take and I do this. I take the fourth root of both sides. And chum. So what will that fourth root do to the 16? What's the fourth root of 16? 2. If I multiply 0 pi times 1 fourth, what do I get? 0 pi. If I multiply 2 pi times 1 fourth, what do I get? Pi over 2. Okay, this is about to get awesome. If I ask you for the four roots, that means I want you to go k equals 0 up to what? No, up to 3. Okay, so if k equals 0, our first root, z sub 0, will be 2 cis. Obviously, k is 0, so that'll just be 0 pi. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, now if k equals 1, this is now 2 cis what? Pi over 2. If z equals 2, or uh, if k equals 2, sorry, I'd have 2 cis pi. If k equals 3, I'd have 2 cis 3 pi over 2. Okay, here we go. This is about to just take your brain and send it places that are awesome. In complex form, if I were to sketch that, where would it be? Extend there, rotate nothing, right? What would that coordinate be? 2 plus 0i, right? Isn't that just 2? If I decide I could just leave it like that. The first root is 2, okay? Now, remember what we just did. We're anticipating 2 minus 2, 2i and minus 2i. So let's see what happens. This one here, that's going to be 0 plus 2i, right? 0 plus 2i, so it'd be 2i. Oh, oh, hello. This one right here, that's going to be negative 2. There's no complex portion to that. It's just on the imaginary or the real axis. And then the last one, Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we skipped a couple slides here. We're going to jump into number three. It says find the three cube roots of that. Okay. So I would say z cubed equals that. Um, and then what would, how would I write that in cis form? This is root two. This is root two. What would this be? Two, right? So I'd have two cis pi over four. Perfect. One thing I forgot though, it would be pi over four plus two pi k. Now instead of two pi k, I'm going to write eight pi k over what? Four. Make it easier on myself. So now z will equal. 2 cis pi over 4. Am I recording? Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Okay. So, what are we going to do here? Uh, 2 to the 1 third power. Ew. Gross, right? So, I'm just going to do this. Make it look pretty, yeah? You okay with that? Uh-huh. Okay, so that'd be cis. Looks like pi over 12 plus 8 pi over 12. Someone is going to be tempted. They're going to be tempted to reduce that, but why put them in common denominator form and then change it again? Don't do it. All right, so if we want the three cube roots of the original... How many k's do I want to plug in? 0, 1, and 2. Did you know that if you went out to 3, you'd just loop back to 0? You'd loop back to the exact same spot that you were at when you had k equals 0. It'd just be coterminal. Hello. How fun. So it's not necessary to go beyond that. Someone will because they'll see the three cube roots and they'll go out to k equals 3 just because they see 3 and they think 3 and they're like squirrel and they see squirrel. Okay, so if k equals 0, z, our first root, would be the cube root of 2, which is a very interesting number, cis pi over 12. Now, now, if they plug in 1, they'd get the cube root of 2, cis what? <coughs> 9 pi over 12, which I am going to... 9 pi over 12, I'm going to reduce to that. Sure, right? 9 pi over 12 reduces to that. And then my third root, which is k equals 2, I'm going to plug this 
in uh, k equals 2, that should be, what is that, 17 yeah. pi over 12? Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. So it'd be, it'd be 1 plus 8 twice, right? So 17 pi over 12. Okay. Now, typical language for this is to, um, and, and I'm not going to mark it off, but as you get up in levels and you get to HL2, uh, this is going to be required that your argument here is between negative pi and pi. Both of these are between 0 and pi, so they're good, but this one wouldn't be. So this is, what would 2 pi look like with 12 in the denominator? Yeah, so it would be 25 or 24 pi over 12, so this would be negative 7 pi over 12. So it's not a requirement that, that you have that, but that would be a requirement later on. Okay, so there's your three roots. Now, where would they end up at? Okay, this is, this is not easy to graph. Um, and you're not going to be required to put this in, back into rectangular form because we don't know pi over 12 as a unit circle angle. 3 pi over 4 is pretty easy to work with, but the others aren't. So if I were to sketch these, right, I'm extending uh, the cube root of 2, which is like a little over 1, I think. So if I went pi over 12, this would be z sub 0 to be our first root. Our second root would be like up here. This would be z sub 1. Right, that's about pi over 3 pi over 4. That's about pi over 12. Our other root would end up here. And because we found, oh, that should be z2. Because we found three roots, it forms what kind of triangle? Yeah, an equilateral triangle right there. Draw triangle! Gains, image not to scale. All rights reserved. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment below. I just I just got a twenty dollar gift card to GNC from a senior. Did you actually? Yeah, as a thank you. So I can get in the door and maybe get some protein water. <laughs>